When Father's days are past, as long as life shall last, our greatest joy will be to shout the call We've got some good navigators at Wabe. When are we supposed to pick up the girls at Mrs. Blaney's? Nine o'clock. Got a shoe brush? Mm. Did you tell that Brown to shape up at this dance? I told that high school Harry to stop Mickey mousing around. Oh, no. What do you expect when you shine your shoes in your only good shirt? Well, they're given two weeks to learn this old Wabash, and then they have to come into the chapel here, and they come out these side doors and line up in the front here as you see them now. And then the sophomores, at the sign of the senior council member, swoop down on them and start to harass them. I mean, well, they may pat their hair or, or sing in their ears, and the idea is to confuse them enough so that they uh, sing the wrong words or forget the words, and if they do this, and if a senior council member hears them, then they have to go inside the chapel. And they have to go inside, they have to either sing it for the senior council members, or they have to write it out. And of course, if they really don't know the song, then they get this W haircut that you've heard so much about. of us who have been at Wabash College received a good education and have memories too. This is Mr. Ivan Wiles, retired executive vice president of General Motors, one of Wabash's most devoted trustees. Although over two-thirds of Wabash men nowadays go on to graduate and professional study, this college doesn't consider itself merely a preparatory place for advanced schooling. It's a place where a man, no matter what his career may ultimately be, can get a broad liberal education, have a better career, and be a better man, a freer man because of it. We can do this, but we must do it better. This will take more faculty, more space, as the students said. All of it is needed so that Wabash men can have the breadth of education needed to assume leadership roles in a free society. They will come closer, I believe, than those with highly specialized training only to solving the world's problems, economic, industrial, human, social, whatever. My commitment is to this kind of education as it is offered by this college. But last year at commencement, one of the students said it very succinctly. There are many paths available to this thing we call education. Some are narrow and technical, others are broader in scope. This latter type is what we term liberal arts. A liberal arts education, of the type found at Wabash, has been called by some an impractical education for gentlemen who never plan to do anything productive. They say a man should train for one vocation and follow it. But the men who must perpetuate the vital spirit in our nation will deal with men and ideas, and not primarily with specific skills or abstract figures. They will not succeed merely because of the number of facts they can regurgitate. Newman said, the test of an education lies not in what a man knows, but in what he is. Gentlemen, what are we? Every year when commencement time comes round again, with its mingling senses of urgency and nostalgia, its scenes of classic familiarity, the final conversations for a while, the luncheons, and the luncheon's friendships renewed and stories retold. The boisterous class reunions and the quiet ones. The baccalaureate on Sunday morning.
commencement on Sunday afternoon. Here, after four years, that the first image of a man appears, sometimes holding yet only the promise of manhood. We ask, where is Wabash? This is where it is. Byron Trippett, president of the college, working late at night as usual, comes again upon the question and its answer. When Wabash College was founded in 1832, there were about 60 colleges in America. They were all much alike. They were small, they were for men, they were devoted to the liberal arts curriculum. Today, there are almost 2,000 colleges and universities in the land, and Wabash is one of the very few which continues to adhere to the original American model. To me and to other people around the campus, this is important. We believe in liberal education. We believe that its end is not pure knowledge. It is the liberally educated man. A man whose exploration of the whole range of human inquiry has made him realize that the most important problem confronting man is the problem of man himself. And it is my personal belief that Wabash College, a good place of learning in the old tradition, is really to be found in the hearts and the minds, in the humaneness and the awareness of all those men who once studied here. <laughs> 